Good morning. Hello. So we're going to do the um, tutorial video on Unit 2 today. So here is your slides for Unit 2. So first thing you need to do is read the slides. Um, if you haven't read the slides, then you need to listen to the podcast. If I don't have the podcast on there yet, I will do that today. I'm looking for the podcast. Do I have that on there? Mm -mm. Doesn't look like I do. So I will go ahead and put that on there today. For those of you who don't care to read it or struggle with that. All right, so as a reminder, all of the answers are in here in your slideshows. So they are in there as a per chapter. So this tells you what you're going to be learning about, uh, what you're focusing on. Each chapter talks about a different thing. So chapter one talks about the healthcare worker in general and what they um, use. This is the Hippocratic Oath, the HIPAA, okay, how doctors should behave, what is medical quackery um, that is uh, talked about in the quiz. This is a simple error turned deadly, talking about snake oil, medical malpractice, Okay, what is medical malpractice? All right, some different scenarios that you should talk about or think about. Patients' bills of rights. Okay, that's kind of a big deal there. All right, thinking about that. Then step uh, chapter two talks about safety. And then OSHA. OSHA is uh, also in the quiz. So knowing about OSHA, that's keeping workers safe. And um, we have OSHA all over the place. PPE is important to OSHA. OSHA requires you know, PPE to be used. Um, what OSHA says, so this is your violations. This is what the requirements are. And then what they say and what they mean. Okay, how do you decipher the legal jargon? All right, and then uh, where are you close? How do you know what that means? And then filing a claim. How do you file a claim? This is on the quiz. Uh, don't drink that. Uh, safety data sheets. That's also on the quiz. It's also part of your assignments. How do you read a safety data sheet? Um, SDS means safety data sheets. An MSDS, Medical Safety Data Sheet. Okay, so these are on the quiz as well. What is in Section 4? What is in Section 7, 8? So um, those are, you don't have to rem remember these. You can go back um, when you are using your quiz. You can use the notes, okay? You can come back to this in your uh, slideshow while you're taking the quiz, okay? So you don't have to like memorize these. All right, so these are just uh, OSHA and SDS are just one way that OSHA helps you uh, make sure that you stay safe on the job, okay? Uh, chapter three is working together, uh, passing along information, how to do that safely uh, electronic medical records, uh, electronic medical records, EMR etiquette. All right, how to do that um, professionally. And then chapter four. Okay, so in chapter four, you're going to talk about um, learning about communicating with patients. So in this chapter, you're going to um, learn about forming ex uh, from explaining a diagnosis to discussing possible treatments. Communicating with patients is the backbone of many medical professions. So 
You're going to learn about um, good communication. Often stop, starts with nonverbal communication. So this slide talks about that. Then you're going to go with um, common suggestions for medical workers who interact with patients, um, what to practice, how to practice your stance, your face, um, we all have trouble with that. Good eye contact. All right. And then active listening. I know that this is on the quiz. Active listening. How do you do that? Addressing anxiety and ensuring understanding. And then using this method, um, a doctor might explain a diabetes diagnosis to a patient. How are you going to do that? The teach back method is um, helpful, but there are other also other methods. Okay, so the teach back, back method is um, mentioned in the quiz as well, I know. Okay, so avoid complicated medical words, listen to the patient's ideas, answer all the questions, and allow the patient to be involved in their treatment. All right, so that is some of that information. Uh, chapter 5 talks about what you can and you can't say. Okay, so this isn't any profession, but this talks about um, confidentiality, um, HIPAA violations, and your medical information. So HIPAA is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996. It's kind of a big deal. So you need to know HIPAA and technology. Um, the HIPAA enforcement is one of the things that the Department of Health and Human Services is responsible for. So it's not a OSHA thing, it's a HHS thing. All right, so there's now there's a knowledge check. So you know that these are the questions for the knowledge check. So you can kind of figure out the answers before you take the knowledge check. That way you can get an A on that um, first time around. So I've given you all the questions for that first. And then here's your conclusion. <laughs> your critical thinking questions uh, for just to answer the critical thinking questions. So these critical thinking questions go right back directly to the PowerPoint. Okay. So one way that medical professionals communicate. So that goes back to that communication section. Dominic is helping a patient out fill out the paperwork for an upcoming surgery. The next few forms to fill out are HIPAA forms. The patient asks Dominic what these forms are for. Write a short paragraph showing how Dominic could best explain the meaning of HIPAA. So go back to that HIPAA section and, and figure out what that means and then help him. What Number three, what can be found on a safety data sheet? Identify several poisons and or hazards material that can be found on an SDS. Discuss what information might be included in with these materials. So go back to that SDS section, okay? And that will help you with this. Um, number four, Zeke is a pediatrician who has recently begun using a new EMR program for his practice. That's electronic medical records. Unfortunately, someone has hacked onto, into his online server and downloaded several patient files. Okay, so go back to that electronic medical record section and figure out what he could do. All right. Mei Ling's mother has found a new physician to help her with some pain she feels in her back. Um, that doctor is a quack. Mei Ling doesn't understand this phrase. What is medical quackery? Discuss an example of a famous quackery. So go back to that section in the slideshow to help you answer this question. Okay, All of these questions you can get help with in the slideshow. Okay, Use the slideshow to your advantage on these. All right. Now, activity two, calming the situation. When a person seeks out medical care, it's usually because they're in pain or worried about something. This means that they are not always at their best. They could be agitated or difficult to understand. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a moment to think in this activity or practice communication skills using a scenario where a patient has come to an emergency room for treatment. 
Okay, so the next assignment uh, we're talking about is Unit 2, Activity 1. And in Unit 2, Activity 1, um, you need to calm the situation. So you have to, um, you have a patient that is, um, you are the receptionist, the triage nurse, the physician, or another health care for, professional. That's your, that's your job. You have to figure out which job you are. All right. Your patient is having pain in their stomach, but they don't know what's causing it. So they're worried. They're stressed out. They don't know what's what's causing it. They're like freaking out. Right. So you are going to decide on your um, as the medical professional, you have to figure out how you're going to handle this interaction. OK, so you're going to demonstrate verbally. All right. In your active listening, your verbal communication, or in your nonverbal communication. So you have to demonstrate on your submission how you're going to calm down your patient. All right. Remember, this goes back to that section in the slideshow on communication. So if you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, Miss Adams, this doesn't make sense to me. Go back to the slideshow that talks about communication. Okay, that's going to tell you everything you need to know. All right. So take that slideshow part about communication and how and apply that to this assignment. All right. So what you're going to do is you're going to list at least one specific way. You're going to demonstrate each skill right here, these skills when interacting with this patient. Regardless of how they are acting, it's your job to get all the information you need as well as calm them down. All right. So you're putting yourself in the mindset of one of these professionals. OK, one of these professionals up here. You're one of these. You're either the receptionist, the triage nurse, the physician or one of these other healthcare professionals. All right. So you tell me which professional you are from this list and you're going to tell me how are you going to use these three uh, skills of communication to calm this person down and get the information you need. All right. Now, once you have that taken care of, you can either record your interaction, like tell me how you're going to do it. You're going to make a video. You're going to use your, you know, camera phone to record it. You can use your, you know, computer to record it. You can just record it on, you can just make a list. I mean, if you don't feel comfortable recording yourself, just make a list on the computer, you know, just write it down. But if you could think you can do that well enough, um, just making a list without doing a video file, I'm okay with that. All right. Um, that's fine too. So if you can write it down without having to record and just tell me specifically how you're going to do it, those three things, then that's fine. Okay. If you're being shy and you don't want to make a recording, I'm not going to make you do that. As long as you can tell me what you need to tell me, then I will accept that. Okay. That I'm, hopefully that's clear. All right. The next assignment is activity two. All right, I've given you some samples over here. All right, so detecting the data. All right, so knowing how to read and interpret data is an important skill to have when working in the healthcare industry. Um, and in addition to the types of data, you need, as a medical worker, you need to know how to interpret safety information and guidelines. All right. So we're going to learn how to decode uh, medical safety data sheets. All right. So again, that is in the slideshow. All right. Remember, if you didn't read the slideshow, then you might be confused about that. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the file to look over the document. That's the samples that I gave you. Okay. You're going to open up the um, information and you're going to interpret the MSDS. All right. And then you're going to figure out what that information is. 
All right, and then in your own words, you're gonna tell me what you've figured out, okay? So you're gonna investigate an OSHA standard. Explore the OSHA website. There's a link right there, okay? And then look under standards column, under general industry link, scroll through, and underneath the, the standard that you pasted, interpret what is being said and rewrite it in your own words. And then step three, reflect what you saw. Now that you figured out how to read this, the medical document, tell me, just reflect on the whole process. So you read it, the document, you looked at the OSHA standard, and then like, what did that whole process feel like? Was it hard? Was it diff pretty easy? Um, if you were in the field of med in the medical field, um, doing that on a regular basis, would that have been tedious? Uh, is that something you think you would like to do? Is that something you think would be hard for someone to do? Um, what do you think about that? So just tell me in a paragraph or two, explaining your thoughts on that. Um, if you want, if you need like some help, how, what questions do you want to answer in your, in your reflection? Here are some questions that you can answer, um, in your, in your paragraph that would help you. Okay. And then you're just going to submit that in a document. Okay. So here's some links that I gave you, um, for the OSHA standard links, if you want to just a little bit of help for that. Okay. Just trying to help you out there. So for this one, you are doing three things. You are looking at your sample. Your SDS is right here. This is your SDS safety sheet. So you're looking at this and you're giving me information on um, what it means. Okay. Then you are um, giving me an OSHA standard that goes with it. And then you're reflecting on the process, the whole process of what it is. Okay. So that's that one. All right. And then let's see, let's go to, all right. And then finally is the quiz time. So you are welcome to use the slideshow for the quiz. All right. I would rather you do it once and get it done and do it well than do it three times because that seems like a waste of time to me. So use your slideshow to help you through the quiz. I don't have a problem with that. All right. So that's, that's why I have, I don't have your Chromebook locked. Okay. I don't want you using someone else to help you answer the questions. I want you to figure it out yourself. All right. It's not a group project. It's an individual project. All right. Um, so that is the information for unit two. Hopefully that helps. And um, I will see you soon. Good luck with that and uh, enjoy.